Hey guys, it's Papa from Real Social Dynamics, and I'm here at my country club playing executive round of golf. I play as much as I can. I've been playing about once a week recently, but I love it because it's one of my biggest passions to kind of do business as like my outdoor office. It's kind of a thing I could do throughout my life, and it's something that I love doing just because it's outdoors. And I love like the adventure and free spirit of it. I actually started learning how to play about a year ago. It was kind of one of those things I did just to relax me from all the craziness that was going on in Real Social Dynamics about one or two years ago. And then I started doing marathons and my knees got shot. And I basically was like, well, I'd love to do something outdoors, but something that wasn't so hardcore my knees and something that was also really social. So now I come out here and I bring RSD staff, RSD joint venture partners, and also a lot of my friends. And this is kind of like my outdoor place to network socially. And so I thought I'd be bringing you here today just to share with you guys one of my passions, one of my experiences, and also have it as a little session for us to kind of talk about what's going on with this RSD Founders Club, and also give you some cool little tips and tactics, some mindsets, basically just whatever's on my mind of today. And I'm hoping to do this a little bit more often on my YouTube channel. All right, we're here in the second hole. I wanted to talk to you guys about why I got into golf. It's literally the most difficult sport to pick up. And I got into it as a challenge to myself for the process of making a commitment to mastery. Now, one of the things I thought was an analogy to making mastery is that you have to usually, according to Malcolm Gladwell, spend about 10,000 hours on any particular thing until you really master it. So what I started doing is I created a golf blog on CoKingdomGolf.com to practice my mastery over golf, tracking how I'm hitting, how I'm swinging, and what have you. The exact same thing I did when I was involved with improving my dating skills and just tracking all the field reports and assessments. And that's why we created RSD Nation, so that other people could track their own field reports and do the exact same thing. The bottom line, though, is that by making a commitment of something that you're going to follow through on through that 10,000 hour process to mastery is a challenge. So you also sometimes want to have mentors in your mastermind group. For golf, I hired some of the best golf coaches in the world. I'm lucky I'm here in Vegas where there's over 300 golf courses. In pickup, we also have some of the best in the world in terms of nightlife, so it's awesome. However, you could practice this mastery process in any city. Just make sure you make a strong commitment and track it and make sure you stick and fall forward with your goal. Earlier I discussed the 10,000 hour rule to mastery and I really wanted to put it to the test by taking on the most difficult sport in the world, golf. Because if I could prove that through that 10,000 hour process, you could gain mastery. And either way, no matter whether I get mastery or not, I'm able to prove to myself that by putting that time towards that process of mastery, I'm sure I'm gonna get really, really good at this game. My present goal is to try to compete in some of the PGA Tour amateur events and just be able to do it competently and I think it'd be really awesome to be able to do that. Plus, it'll be a lot of fun. Now, the mastery curve is not like a super um, hardcore like stock curve that just rises really, really high. It's more like a broken staircase. According to George Leonard, who wrote a book called Mastery, it's kind of like you get this path where you get this higher skill set, you kind of plateau, but you drop a little bit, and then you go a little bit higher, you plateau, and you drop a little bit. Now, although you sometimes will have these bigger drops with this broken staircase, overall, you're sticking to it, you're overall going to get that higher result, and you're overall getting a little bit higher over time. It's kind of like a stock that you just invest in for a long time. And there was a book called The Millionaire Next Door about a guy who invested just a couple thousand dollars every month into a very safe investment vehicle. And just doing that every month for 20 years made him a millionaire. It's just that commitment to that long-term process through that process of mastery and getting that success and goal at the end through your patience. One of the things that I think is most important to getting success is having other people. Because when you have the help of other people, you're able to get their mentorship, you're able to have them as part of a team. And that's why we built RSD as a team as opposed to a company where it's just me and Tyler. And one of the things that allows us to be successful is having an undying loyalty. Because above all else, I believe loyalty is more important than any other aspect. When you're helping out your friends, and you have their back and they have yours, you have that security, that safety net, and that trust that grows out through the long process. 
it also allows you to have that mindset so that when you're networking with other people, you know that you have a lot of value in yourself. Even though loyalty is something that sounds very simple, it's also a very rare, rare thing. It's not a commodity. It's something that's built over time. And so if you know that you're deep down the kind of guy who's very loyal to his friends and the people that are close to him, and you treat everyone like family, like the guys in Fast and the Furious, you have that strong value that you know you could offer other people. So even when you're with the most successful people, guys who may be way richer than you, way more successful than you for with any other thing, as long as you have that strong sense of loyalty, that's something that is of so much value to pretty much everyone on the planet. And if it's high enough, you know that when you're connecting with other people, that will add a huge value to why people want to be friends with you. There'll also be a huge value for why anyone in business will want to do business with you. Although I've always been motivated to have success in business, my main motivations have really just been about the attitude I've always had as being more of an explorer, trying to explore the world, new adventures, new things, and just having fun. In RSD, I wouldn't be doing the business if it wasn't fun, if it wasn't a good time. And that's why I'm still here. I've been doing this since 2002, and there's no way I would be still around here if I wasn't surrounded by people that would add positivity to my life. And I think that by adding that positivity to the life of others is also very motivating. So I'm also motivated by all the people whose livelihoods and also all the people who are inspired by Real Source Dynamics and for Real Source Dynamics and for all the success and all the things that we share through the adventures, through the field reports. And it's always, it's always very glamorous, exciting, fun, new. And I love that about RSD so much. At the same time, it's a ton of work. Nothing comes easy. I always get asked about what's the magic pill to stay motivated. And it really is just knowing that through that hard work and that patience and pushing through, at the end of the day, you have that hope that you're gonna have a good strong payoff. And usually, that is the case. One of the most interesting posts that I read on RSC Nation recently was a question that was actually directed to me about how to fall in love. I think that was a weird question to me because when I got into pickup, when I got into the game, my goal was originally just to get a girlfriend. Yet at the same time, now half of RSD, when you ask them, a lot of them will say they're interested in self-improvement, but at the same time, they're interested in really just picking up as many girls as they possibly can, where half the guys are looking for getting a relationship. And I thought that was a really interesting question to me because love is something that a lot of people that are really addicted to the game have difficulty experiencing. They're kind of like um, into that whole egocentric mindset where they're focusing on trying to get that result, which for them is usually just about sex. I just feel like the chemistry you have, the physical and mental chemistry, when you have love or that passion and actually caring about one person, that's something that really has a lot more value to me. And when you have that longer term relationship and that love together, I feel like it's a more powerful thing than just getting sex because I think that getting sex is a lot easier. A lot of people will say, you know, your guys, why are they interested in learning how to pick up? Why are they like learning all these skill sets and spending so much money and in investing in it? In the long run, I think everyone is looking for love, not just in terms of like a relationship, but they're interested in love in their life. It's a love for like themselves, their love for their skill set, their love for their passions, and their love for other people. And if they found that one person that they want to spend the rest of their life with, they could get married. Right now, I'm the only married RSD instructor. The rest of the guys are in the field. And I think that's awesome. They have really exciting adventures to share. At the same time, I still have great adventures to share as well. It's just my life is very different than most of the RSD guys. However, I can relate to them. I still understand a lot of what they're doing, their skill sets and what have you. And I look forward to sharing a lot of my own adventures and stories and letting you guys know about how you could take RSD to that next level, even when you find love in your life. One of the biggest concerns that people who are in relationships have is how are they gonna have that active, spicier sex life? For me, a lot of it has to do not just with the sexual aspect of romance and dating, a lot of it has to do with keeping that chemistry going, that emotional connection, sharing your values with that partner of yours. For me, I do a weekly date night where I'll go to dinner, maybe I'll have wine and stay in, watch a movie. I'll maybe sometimes go to the spa. Other times I'll just use golf because my wife, we love playing golf. We also love playing video games. We have that commonality, that passion. And I think for me, having that basis of being interested in that other person's hobbies and also having that person interested in yours is a huge thing for me. Now, 
I'm lucky because I'm involved with getting videos on YouTube and she has a video production company and also RSD is really involved with videos. So we also have that commonality in terms of careers. If you don't have that, that's still totally cool. As long as you guys can connect and have fun together, that's the most important part because most of that aspect of your life, that's that sexual aspect. Yeah, a lot of it could be with learning all sorts of fun ways to keep things in the bedroom happier and spicier. I used to experiment with this thing that was called uh, Karma Kama Sutra or uh, Cosmo Kama Sutra. And it was like a website that had all these positions. On the other hand, really just for me, and just enjoying some like Cafe de Mar music and creating this uh, fireplace setup and just enjoying some time with my wife for me is more of like that classic romantic ideal. And I really just enjoy the classics nowadays, like um, hanging out by the fire, having wine, sometimes having a nice meal in, maybe doing a cheese platter, and having that one-on-one -on -one time. The bottom line is you're escaping the life of your business, your friends, your work, your family, and you're just spending one-on-one -on -one time. I think that's really important for not just being like in a married relationship or being one-on-one -on -one in a long-term relationship or any dating life, just keeping that thing interested and keeping that thing where you're interested in her and showing that genuineness of being really interested in her because when you are more interested, you're more interesting as well. Having been in the Air Force Reserves Officer Training Corps and also in a fraternity, I very quickly learned the power and importance of having a very strong brotherhood. And I use that in my business life and in my friendships because I believe that the loyalty in a brotherhood, whether it's among your wingmen or whether it's just people who are your friends, because I have a lot of friends who are not really successful in business, they're more just like good people to hang out with. I have a lot of friends that are just people that play video games with me, I have people who just play golf with me. Then I also have those friends that are really successful businessmen, really successful in their social life and have powerful soul circles. At the same time, I have just as much loyalty and brotherhood to each and every one of them. Within my company, I view our team as a brotherhood as well. And we've always treated our company, at least until now, as more of a brotherhood than it has been in terms of, we'd say a typical corporation where there's this hierarchy and what have you. We work in teams, we work together, and it's more of a more flat hierarchy than it is that top-down kind of like leadership. I also view that because positional leadership is the weakest form of leadership. Having a leadership from people that are inspired, that trust you, that are motivated to help you, have that common goal, that is most important. One time I had dinner with the president of South Africa. It was actually with Tyler. We went to an entrepreneur's organization retreat on a safari through South Africa in Kruger Park. And we got to see a lion and, and well, many lions. We almost uh, hit one when we were driving in a Jeep. We avoided that. There was uh, elephant stampede surrounding our cabin. There was crazy snakes. And we went on an amazing safari, but we also had a dinner with the former president of South Africa, J.W. de Klerk. This is the guy who ended apartheid. He was an old white guy that was growing up in a town where everybody in Cape Town were really racist against blacks, treated them like crap. And at the same time, he ended apartheid and even had it in a situation where they elected a black president right after him. And it was a guy who worked with Nelson Mandela. They were kind of like uh, Tyler and Papa of RSD, but for the revolution. And I found that so interesting that I, added, I asked him a question. I said, how are you able to get all these people that hated what you were doing so much and were so supportive of apartheid to end it and then even have a situation where they were allowing to have a black president get elected? He said, well, the most important thing is to have everyone on the same vision and mission. And when you have that, everyone's aligned. And I believe that is very true in every situation in life, whether it's in your business, family, personal life, and especially in your dating life. All right, guys, we did it. We made it through nine holes. We finished our first executive round of golf together. I'm really glad you guys were able to do this with me. It was a lot of fun. Now, just in the same way that you have a long journey, all sorts of challenges that go into your path. The same thing happens in business and dating and what have you. In RSD's business, we had a lot of struggles building this company. It wasn't easy. It wasn't like I just got handed a ton of money and we just created this company because we just had a big backup of funds. We were always like riding on the end, hus hustling as like hustlers are. And we've always had that mentality that you gotta work hard and push through the limits. And that's the same culture that we have in our belief and our work ethic and our dating life and our pickup life and that ethic that we had for that. Because remember guys, there's no magic pill. The only magic pill is you. 
You're the ones who have to push forward and get that success and grasp it. And if you do so, you make it to the end, you have that sweet finish and it feels really good. Thank you for coming and joining me. I really appreciate you guys being here with me. If you guys come to Vegas, maybe we'll play around the golf together. There's over 300 courses. It's also the place of the World Summit. And if you guys are really interested in learning more about me, our business, our networking, our social game, my beliefs in long-term relationships, and you like some of the belief systems and mindsets that I shared with you guys today, I go into way more detail in the RSD Founders Club on rsdfoundersclub.com. Plus, I interview almost every RSD instructor and our internal staff, plus my personal mastermind group of guys that I believe have been a really big influence on my life and trust, like Mr. Game Theory, who I was talking about earlier. So I hope you guys join that tribe as well. Check it out, stay in touch, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I hope to keep you informed about what's going on in my life. Cheers.